Hi guys. It is a uh, <laughs> a cozy 46 degree day here uh, in the collapse of global industrial civilization, the social isolation chamber out uh, here in the great state of Texas. I'm thinking this is probably a record low for Saturday, April 4th, 2020. And uh, I am Sam Mitchell. This is my co-pilot, Sancho Panzo. We are huddling in front of the propane furnace here on this gloomy spring day. Uh, doing what we try to do every day, although it's getting very difficult to find any news about the collapse of the planet. But unbelievably, Unbelievably, the BBC, going the British Broadcasting Corporation, actually is still, I, I don't know why, uh, running stories uh, about the planet that do not include the C word. And so guys, you know, all of this doom and gloom, uh, I just get so tired of it, it is so nice that the BBC, and not just BBC, uh, but Nature, the, the, I believe Nature, is that peer-reviewed, uh, you know, uh, they, apparently they're sick and tired of all of this collapse stories. Uh, so anyway, I thought uh, just to, we all need a little cheering up here in March of 2020, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the science pages of BBC and we're going to go into La La Land. We're going to put on our hopium glasses. This has got to uh, qualify as the most, uh, you know, darkly, darkly, blackly humorous article uh, from the Apocalyptomist Files. Take it away, BBC. Oceans can be, oceans can be successfully restored by 2050, say scientist. There you go. We can turn this freight train around for the planet's oceans. Despite being treated as humanity's rubbish dump for decades, the oceans of the world are pro proving remarkably resilient, says a new scientific review in the journal Nature. Building, building all that resilience could lead to a full recovery of the oceans within three decades, the researchers argue. Climate change and the challenges of scaling up existing conservation efforts are the big hurdles, they say. The researchers caution that the window for action now is very narrow. The window for action is closing fast. Gee, I have never heard that one. Okay. Uh, let's see. The oceans have been exploited by humans for centuries. Uh, I would probably say millennia. Uh, the my computer is doing all sorts of jumping around today. The oceans have been exploited by humans for centuries, but the negative, in the negative impacts of our involvement have only become clear over the last 50 years or so. Fish and other marine species have been hunted almost to extinction. Well, plenty of them have, have been hunted to extinction while oil spills and other forms of pollution have poisoned the seas. Does not mention dead zones in here. 
Over the last few decades, the growing influence of climate change has bleached coral reefs and seen the ocean's acidity increase and will continue to see the ocean's acidity increase. This was documented in last year's special report from the IPCC. So it seems like all sorts of reasons for apocalyptism to me. The new review recognizes the scale of the problems, but, but also points to the remarkable resilience of the seas. Humpback whale numbers have rebounded since the ban on commercial whaling, and of course more and more humpback whales now that their numbers have rebounded. My guess is their numbers have rebounded to about 10% of where they were uh, before whaling began, and even that shrunken number already, you know, uh, choking to death on plastic, getting all wrapped up uh, in, in all those fishing lines and crap, getting smashed by cargo ships and cruise ships, uh, starving to death because uh, they, they can't find their food. Uh, yeah, talk to me about humpback whale numbers rebounding. Uh, the proportion that, now this one, uh, I, 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 I don't know what, uh, it, it, would, it, it would take a, it would take some caterpillar steam shovel to uh, dig into the BS of this statement to the small print. The proportion of marine species as threatened with global extinction by the IUCN has dropped from 18% in 2000 to 11.4% in 2019. I would really love to see behind that asterisk. Okay, this is lead author Carlos Duarte, professor of marine sciences at the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology in Saudi Arabia. Quote, our study documents the recovery of marine populations, habitats, and ecosystems following past conservation interventions. It provides specific evidence-based recommendations to scale proven solutions globally. We know what we ought to do to rebuild marine life, and we have evidence that this goal can be achieved within three decades. Indeed, this does require that we accelerate our efforts and spread them to areas where efforts are currently modest. Close quote. Yes. The researchers identified nine components that are key to rebuilding the oceans. Salt marshes, mangroves, seagrasses, coral reefs, kelp forests, oyster reefs, fisheries, megafauna, and the deep ocean. Hmm. The scientists recommend a range of actions that are required, including protecting species, harvesting wisely, and restoring habitats. This is Professor Callum Roberts from the University of York in the UK. We now have the skills and expertise to be able to restore vital marine habitats such as oyster reefs, mangrove swamps, and salt marshes, which keep our seas clean, our coasts protected, and provide food to support entire ecosystems. Science gives us reasons to be optimistic about the future of our oceans, but we are not currently doing enough in the UK or globally. 
Uh huh. A big challenge is climate change, which is raising sea levels and making ocean waters more acidic. The amount of warming that has already taken place will likely make rebuilding tropical reefs quite difficult, said Professor Duarte. If we don't tackle climate change, it raises the ambition and immediacy of these efforts. We risk wasting our efforts. We also need to move toward reducing pressure on fish stocks and tackle elements and tackle elements of pollution such as plastic litter. Another big question is where the hell the money is coming from. The new study estimates that it will cost somewhere from 10 billion to 20 billion dollars each year to rebuild marine life by 2050. But the review also points out that for every dollar invested, the expected return would be 10 bucks. The authors acknowledge that governments have many other issues besides the oceans on their minds right now, uh huh. But they believe that rescuing the oceans is a very achievable goal. Quoting Professor Duarte, failure to embrace this challenge and in doing so, condemning our children to a broken ocean unable to support high quality livelihoods is not an option. Mm -hmm. So if you enjoyed that uh, descent into lunacy on the BBC science page, they also uh, recommend some more stories here from the BBC science page on the same subject. Here is, we're just going to touch on it, just a few others. <clears throat> UN panel signals climate change red alert on blue planet. Climate change is devastating our seas and frozen regions as never before a major new UN report warns. According to a UN panel of scientists, waters are rising, the ice is melting, and species are moving habitat due to human activities. Yes, and the loss of permanently frozen lands threatened to unleash even more carbon hastening the decline. There you go. Okay. How about next, if you liked, the how we're going to save the ocean story. Ocean plastic tide violates the law. The global tide of ocean plastic pollution is a clear violation of international law. Yes. Uh, okay. How about ocean plastic could triple in the next decade? Yes. Ocean plastic could triple in a decade. The amount of plastic in the ocean is set to triple in the next decade unless litter is curbed, a major report has warned. Plastic is just one issue facing the world's seas, along with rising sea levels, warming oceans, and pollutions, pollution. But the foresight future of the sea report for the UK government uh, said there are also opportunities to cash in on the ocean economy. Yes, 
Uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> uh huh. All right. Okay. One more. Uh, we have ten years to save the world's most threatened sea turtle, the largest turtle in the ocean. The leatherback gets its name from its tough rubbery skin, but with threats like getting tangled in fishing gear, the future for one population looks dire, says conservation groups. At the current rate of decline, which has already sent the population down more than 90%, the critically endangered Eastern Pacific leatherback turtle will vanish within 60 years. There you go. Uh, kiss goodbye. The, uh, the population of leatherbacks in the Pacific has declined more than 90% the night since the 1980s which qualifies as critically endangered on the red list of threatened species so let me get this straight so in the past 40 years the population has crashed by more than 90% yet they're saying with less than 10% of the population remaining in the last 40 years, the most critically endangered turtle on the planet has 60 years. I, 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 I don't know, guys. Uh, I never was good at math. Uh, I am not a, uh, an oceanographer. Anyway, uh, if there is anybody listening to this suffering some delusion that, uh, that the oceans uh, can be, just can be, what, uh, turned back into a garden of Eden in the next 30 years, the oceans are going, for all intents and purposes, are going to just be a barren, trash-filled wasteland by 2050. There's not going to be a coral reef. There's not going to be a kelp bed. There's not going to be a mangrove forest uh, left in the planet's oceans. The BBC knows this damn well. I know it. You know it. Sancho Panza knows it. The pop. Will there be crabbies? Will there be crabbies in the ocean or not? Could still be some crabbies. There might be some jellyfish. You know, it might not be a bad century to be a jellyfish. Uh, anyway, if you enjoy the sick, twisted laugh about how we are going to save the oceans in the next 30 years, uh, please thumb this video up. Uh, and please subscribe to Collapse Chronicles while you're over here. But I need to uh, wrap up the April 4th edition in Texas of the Chronicle of the Collapse because I think the pilot on this damn uh, heater just went out and my toes are frozen and my little dog is shivering. Bye guys.